of St. Louis, Valley Sports Midwest, the heart of the fan. It's Wednesday in St. Louis and it's time for Cardinals baseball. The Brewers are in town with a series on the line and hey let's make hay while we can. This is the last time we'll see the division leaders until September. The Cardinals with the win tonight could take two out of three in this series. Hi again everybody Chip and Brad great to be back with you. Great ball game last night except for the result Milwaukee wins it by a final score of three to two and Brad the Cardinals in this stretch of days without a day off made a bevy of roster moves in preparation for game three. Yeah they certainly did look you you know you got to use your entire roster while well, you've got your Liberty Mutual Insurance field coverage. Matthew Libertor is up. James Nail option down. Dylan Carlson, you know he's been dealing with the ankle. He is placed on the IL. They bring in Oscar Mercado and to make room on the 40 man, Packy Naughton was transferred to the 60 day IL. You mentioned Matthew Libertor. He was dealing at AAA for Memphis, and the Cardinals, Brad, are going with a six man rotation now. Well, they have got a bunch of games 18 games in 18 days, and it's a perfect time to do it. Matthew Libertor, you see the numbers 56 punch outs in 46 innings at AAA, and we saw this in spring training. He was pitching effectively with that fastball, and then he finishes off hitters with that. That nasty breaking ball. He's looked great. Super opportunity here for Matthew Libertor. Against a Brewers club that really struggles to hit left handed pitching, a trend we hope continues tonight. Everybody's having trouble hitting the Cardinals bullpen staff. When we come back, Scott Warman and Al Roboski will break down the Cardinals bullpen as we get you set for game three between the Redbirds and the Brew Crew in St. Louis. The Milwaukee Brewers at Bush Stadium rubber game of the three game set between the two Central Division rivals with Al Roboski Scott Warman with you from our Valley Sports Midwest studios here at Ballpark Village. Well Jordan Montgomery gets into the sixth inning last night. The Cardinals bullpen did their work last night and shutting down the Brewers to give the cards the opportunity but that bullpen Al here this month has been sensational. It's been very good. Uh, I mean they're, they're two. Uh, 272 ERA in their last 12 games. Last, they've used seven guys in the last four games. They're really doing the job, and they have well rested. Hillsley had pitched since Friday. Gallegos since Saturday, and then you got Cabrera on Sunday. So you got a lot of guys who are well, well rested. The big three left-handed bats were on the bench tonight, so it's going to be imperative to keep them there, and which is huge because they needed some rest with all the work they got in the month of April. Well, the Pittsburgh Pirates are chasing the Milwaukee Brewers. They were in action today. We'll take a look at their afternoon when we come back on Valley Sports. Below three, but Castro hits his fifth home run of the season. Buckos win it eight to nothing. Rich Hill, the 43 year old, went six innings, didn't give up a run, and struck out seven in the Pirates' win over Detroit. Speaking of streaking, Nolan Arenado is definitely doing that. Chip and Brad have more on the cards, third baseman, when we come back on Valley Sports. Cardinals baseball is brought to you by Budweiser. This bucks for you. By BJC Healthcare, you deserve extraordinary care. And by Chevrolet, the number one selling brand in the St. Louis area. Find yours at your Mid America Chevy dealer. Third final and rubber game of our series with the front running Brewers, Nolan Arenado. It's been a donga day for the Redbirds third baseman. How about your key up player profile for Arenado? Five home runs, five days in a row, just one off of his career high. He did that in September of 2015. He is hitting everything. The fastball, the slider, driving the baseball everywhere. Hopefully they're coming early and often for Nolan Arenado and the Cardinal offense as Matthew Libertor makes his season debut for St. Louis. He'll face Corbin Burns and the first place Brewers next on Valley Sports Midwest. Game in St. Louis. Yes, third final and rubber match head to head between the Cardinals and the first place Brewers. Why is this game so important? Well, first of all, a chance to win another series for the St. Louis Cardinals. But Brad, we won't see the Brewers until September. 
So let's get a leg up tonight behind Matthew Libertor and win two out of three here at home. It's certainly a lot different now with the new schedule. All these games mean a lot. You saw it the way that Greg Council deployed his bullpen yesterday. They wanted that one bad. The Cardinals looking to win this series tonight at Bush Stadium. And it is a beautiful night in St. Louis. Partly cloudy skies. Temperature under 80 degrees. Jim Hayes will join Brad and me in just a moment. And as we touched on just a second ago, Brad, a flurry of roster moves for the Cardinals, who send Matthew Libertor out for his season debut, and that totally reshapes the Cardinals' starting rotation. Yeah, it certainly does. Right now, the thought is to go with a six-man rotation, and a great opportunity for Matthew Libertor, an opportunity that he earned. He was throwing the ball so well at AAA. We saw him last year, appeared in nine games, started seven of them. But this is a different guy that we saw. And there are the numbers last season in his seven stars. An ERA approaching six there, but the velocity has been there for him. The breaking ball is his bread and butter. You take a look at the Hyundai pitch arsenal, the four seam, the curve. He'll sink it every once in a while. You'll see the changeup and slider as well. I want to see that aggressive nature from Matthew Libertor in this one. Ali was telling us before the game, Matthew's always had a good fastball, but his fastball is playing differently. We'll break that down. As he begins his first inning, that's Craig Council, the Brewers skipper. Wade Miley got hurt early in the game. He masterfully deployed his bullpen and won the game 3-2. The Brewers, though, have struggled mightily against left-handed starting pitcher, hitting just 218 as a club. Similar lineup for Craig tonight as the Cardinals and Brewers wrap up our three-game series. A look at your Cardinal defense presented by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. Brendan Donovan gets the start at first base. Paul Goldschmidt will DH for Ali here in game two. Alec Burleson, Lars Nootbaar, and Tommy Edmond getting the start again in right field on this perfect night in baseball heaven. Owen Miller is going to lead off for Milwaukee. He's reached base in 18 straight games and has a nine game hit streak. Let's see if Matthew can stop that here in game three tonight. Miller hitting 329. And up and away at 94 miles an hour. One ball, no strikes. Libertor was four and one with Memphis. And that floats in, says Bruce Dreckman. He's got the plate to ball and to strike. What's your Toyota key to the game tonight? For Matthew Libertor, it's don't change a thing. He got called up for a reason. The way that he was throwing the ball in Memphis, he doesn't have to change anything here at the big league level. Continue to attack. Good 95-mile-an-hour fastball at the top of the zone. That was one of the things that they really wanted him to go out and focus on. Prove that he could throw that fastball with more velocity for an entire game. That's what he's been doing in his eight starts in Memphis. And then be able to finish hitters off at the breaking ball. Strike three, 96 in a paint job. Good start for Libertor. One up and one man down. Mentioned his fastball has always been good. Ali said it's a different looking pitch. Maybe that's an example. Yeah, it's ticked up a little bit in velocity. It's got more ride on it. This time at the bottom of the zone at 96. And that is going to be the key. And it, it has been true throughout his eight starts. That velocity stays there with him throughout the game. There's 96 upstairs. So you think about that from a hitter standpoint, you see 96 up there. Then he has that big breaking ball that is well above league average in the drop that it has that you can throw off of it. William Contreras, the second Brewers hitter, pops that one into the seats foul and out of play. Contreras has been a cold hitter for the Brewers, just one for his last 14. And 6'5", 215-pound left-hander Matthew Libertor has him set up. Little roller slowly hit towards short. And that peg to first is in plenty of time for out number two. You said don't change a thing for Matthew. This is not his first go around in the major leagues. That said, how hard is that to adapt that mindset? knowing that might what might work in AAA might not be as successful here. You know what? I'm sure that that's part of the talking point. We saw Dusty Blake there, the Cardinals pitching coach. I, I think that you learn from the experience that he had last year. And you learn that commanding counts, just like he's doing early in this ball game, is incredibly important. It's something that Matthew didn't do. He didn't throw his fastball effectively last year. It was on the edge as he fell behind a lot. So I think it'll be easy for him to take that mentality into this one. 
Well two outs on ten pitches and an even count for Willie Adamas. Adamas hitting 216 on the year. And over the netting and out of play. He is not lollygagging tonight as Libertor. He is, as you said, in attack mode. Well, he's using the fastball up and he's using it down also. That's something that's another weapon. We saw him last year predominantly with that fastball up in the zone. Swing and a miss. How about that start? Three up, three down, and about 12 pitches. Welcome back to the show, Matthew Libertor. The Cardinals go to work versus Corbin Burns. First and now Corbin Burns goes to work against the hot hitting Cardinals lineup Brad they've been launching home runs boy it'd be nice to see him do it against Burns to win this series tonight. Yeah you know it's going to be a tough customer with Burns on the mound but we know how dangerous this offense can be Nolan Arenado he is on a tear but top to bottom here in the last 10 days this offense has been getting it done and this guy Lars Newbar off the top he's been getting on base at a really high clip. Corbin Burns as tough as they come three straight quality starts for him he's four and two on the season the league hitting just 204 against him and the lefties have been sawed off hitting 148 that one driven in the air towards center Weimer going back and he plays that one off to the side and handles it for out number one. What makes Corbin Burns so effective? Well, the cutter, first of all, that he uses a lot. It averages 94 miles an hour. He bores that in on some of those lefties. He's got the curve, the changeup, slider, and every once in a while he runs that sinker up there. But to me, what makes him so effective is that he is in attack mode all the time. He really doesn't nibble a lot. He's in the zone. He's coming right at you, but he's so difficult to square up. He's four and four lifetime against the Cardinals over 12 starts last year Brad as you saw firsthand he was dominant here at Bush. Well it just overall he had four starts against the Cardinals at a 1.29 ERA and he went seven innings in each of those starts. Buckled was Goldschmidt with that breaking ball it's 0 and 2 Goldie the DH for the Cardinals tonight. Paul hasn't had the best strike zone called for him at the plate. Burns doesn't need much help as Caratini sets up away and that skips up a ball and two strikes. Goldie two for seven in the series seven homers 23 driven in. And needs two doubles to get to 400 as a big leaguer. Tonight would be a nice night for that to happen. Well, he has been a doubles machine on the season. He is leading the league, 16 doubles. Also leading the league in extra base hits with 23 of them. The 2 2. Missed inside. Full count. Burns, the Cy Young winner a couple of years ago. And the first Brewer to lead any league in strikeouts. He had 243 of them. Again, Milwaukee used to be an American League club. Now the Cardinals rival in the central. First full count. Base is empty, one out. And a good at bat for Goldschmidt. Got to two strikes, earns a walk. So you can't defend the base on balls. Let's see what Victor Caratini, the catcher, has in store. He anchors the Brewers Dobbs tire and auto centers defense no Yelich no Telez no Winker with the left hander on the mound for the Cardinals we'll see if that pays off as Nolan Gorman is your hitter riding a seven game hitting streak Nolan at the top with Ronald Acuna Jr. in OPS in the National League. How about that? He's also second in RBI now as Sean Murphy just overtook him, has 34, but 33 driven in for Gorman. What a difference a year makes, right? He get his feet wet last year, see what adjustments that he needed to make. He made those, and one of the most feared hitters right now in the National League. And he's essentially been a platoon player he doesn't see many left handed pitchers as opposed to Acuna who plays against everyone one ball no strikes Goldie a good lead and that one hammered in into right field off the second baseman's glove 
Goldschmidt around second. He's on his way to third. Gorman roasts that baseball for the first Cardinal hit. And the Redbirds in business, first and third with one out. And here is Nolan Arenado, who homered in the first inning again. Nolan has not wasted any time. He's jumping early in counts, early in the game, and just getting things rolling for the Cardinals. It was a forgettable first month for Nolan Arenado. He's making up for it here. You got to think. I mean, he's ready to swing early here against Burns. Second inning home run for Arenado. They've come so fast and furious, I've gotten them confused. We'll take a three-run bomb here, though. As that one buzzed the tower and Caratini wants to settle down Corbin Burns who doesn't look like himself. I think it's safe to say they need innings from Corbin Burns tonight after the bullpen usage of last night and the Wade Miley lat injury. The yeah, bullpen had to eat up over seven innings last night so very difficult. They don't really have any fresh arms down there and Burns has shown you he gets deep into ball games, and I think that's probably part of this with Caratini. Settle him down now. You can't have, can't afford that big inning here. Next RBI for Arenado will be number 1,000 in his big league career. This would be a great spot to get it. Cardinals were frustrated last night, leaving 12 men on base. They've got two aboard here in the first, and only one out. On the ground, that slowly hit toward third, bobbled, and everybody's safe. And the Cardinals take the lead. Well, there it is, RBI number 1,000 for Nolan Arenado. What a milestone that is. Been one of the most dominant players in the game since he showed up. The crowd is seeing it on the Jumbotron here. And getting a great round of applause. Arenado didn't even know. Third primary third baseman since 1920 with 300 or more homers, 1,000 or more RBIs before 1,500 career games. Eddie Matthews, Chipper Jones, and Nolan Arenado, part of a very exclusive club. So the Cardinals cash in the walk first and second out for Contreras and a swing and a miss. So that'll be authenticated and that will head to the trophy case of that man Nolan Arenado. I'm guessing he's got a pretty good man cave by now. You know lots of awards left and right gold gloves platinum gloves silver sluggers. You can add that thousand RBI baseball to the mix. But the look on his face there over at first base, he's like, what is everybody cheering about? All that guy cares about is a ring. That's all he wants to win. He's out here just to win baseball games. One ball, one strike, one nothing. And a swing and a miss. It's one and two for Wilson Contreras. Brewers have pitched him tough, not just in this series, but all year. His brother's spilling all the secrets. That's not nice. Well, Wilson's really going to have to just think about going the other way with it. We've seen him drive the ball that way with authority. And a swing and a miss. Chase one off the plate. 16 pitches for Burns, 50 50 in strikes, but that's a big second out. And Brendan Donovan is your hitter with two aboard. Pretty tough to hit right here. This is a 96 mile an hour cutter that just starts right on the edge and tails off. Let's see if Donovan actually sees a couple of strikes in this at bat. Man, the Cardinals had it set up just how they wanted in the game yesterday. First and third, Donovan up. Two pitches that were not strikes were called strikes. He later struck out for the second out, and that was the last real chance the Birds had. Yeah, and it was a game where home plate umpire Mark, Mark Wagner, he was having a good game and just missed those two in a big spot. Broken bat roller hit towards second. Tarang's got it, and the peg to first is in time. Burns walks Goldschmidt. Nolan Arenado with a big milestone. His 1,000th RBI gives the Cardinals a first inning lead.
the MLB ballpark app will complete your next visit to Bush Stadium buy and manage game tickets redeem offers access exclusive content and much more download the MLB ballpark app today. Well Matthew there's your lead Darren Ruff leads off for Milwaukee it's one nothing Cardinals heading to the second. Libertor 14 pitches 10 strikes so far and throwing firm you just love the fact too that he's attacking with that fastball last year we saw him go to that breaking ball way earlier. Why change the game plan until they force you to exactly if it's working you know establish that fastball then show him the wrinkle now he's got a chance here he can bury rough with a good breaking ball down or throw that heater up again. Libertor was warned that Ruff didn't have his eyes facing the pitcher as he wants to work quickly. So after the warning, he toils with a one two. And missed inside. It's an even count. The Brewers are trying anything they can to hit left handed pitching. It just hasn't happened much. Yeah, maybe it's timing in the box, right? Varying up your different looks. Driven to right. Edmund drifting back and recovers shy of the track that was hit hard by Ruff but four up four down as we check in with the cat Jim Hayes Matthew Libertor had gotten off to a really good start in Memphis and he says he knows why he told me I got built up at spring training for the first time so I got my legs under me to start the season in years past I went to spring training really just for the experience this year with guys at the WBC I got more opportunities and was better conditioned to start the season. He looks sharp doesn't he Chip. He looks terrific strike after strike the fastball is humming and the success that Matthew started with in April is carrying over in his season debut for the Cardinals so far here tonight. And he's a perfect example Brad I think of the cautionary tale that you have to make when you trade in the major leagues everybody knows what Randy Arozarena has done for Tampa Bay. Libertor hasn't had the same success nearly as quickly but this kid's only 23 years old there's still a lot of time before the one loss record is tallied on that trade. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head I think a lot of people forget how young he is at 23 there is a lot of time here for him to continue to develop and make an enormous impact. We're talking about that velocity too for Libertor. Libby has thrown now four pitches in this game, 97 or above. He had five such pitches all of last year. So that's a, a pretty good example of him just letting that fastball rip, trusting it, and just building up again. He's getting stronger. Like he's still figuring out over the last few years how to build yourself up as a professional, how to play that extra month in the big leagues. Downstairs it's a full count for Brian Anderson and for whatever reason big tall left handed pitchers sometimes take longer before you know what you've got. Look how many moving parts he has when you when you're that big and the lanky left hander there's a lot to keep in order. There was a bad miss and there's your first base runner for the Brewers Brian Anderson walks on a curveball and he's aboard with one out Again, think of Randy Johnson when he was a Montreal Expo he couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat right. No he scared every well, he scared everybody his whole career but could you imagine facing young Randy Johnson who couldn't throw a strike. No thanks. No. And he ended up in the Hall of Fame as Tyrone Taylor hits. And didn't get that good fastball. Fastball's been up in this game but it's been effective the Brewers haven't been able to lay off it yet. Well that's where his fastball is really going to play especially with the big breaking ball of his everybody knows like that's kind of a, the four seam up and then the breaking ball that you throw off of it. it's a pretty nice recipe. High fly ball toward left Alec Burleson will measure that one up and makes the catch a step onto the track Taylor is retired and two men are out for switch hitting catcher Victor Caratini. Two seventy three his average a couple of homers and six RBIs. Mm -hmm. 
On ball, no strikes. A little too high. Two balls, no strikes. We welcome the Dodgers to town. The first of four here tomorrow night. Milwaukee heads down to Tampa Bay and they've got a tangle with the Rays in St. Petersburg. Two balls, no strikes. Line over short. And two are on with two out. I think this here to Caratini is just an example of don't fall behind. Falls behind 2 0, goes to the fastball, and ends up being belt high. And Caratini ever the belt it into left. So the lead runner is Brian Anderson. Joey Weimer is the batter. Weimer a villain last evening. And he takes a strike. A really quiet in the box is Weimer, isn't he? <laughs> Very nice, easy swing. Boy, he doesn't need a chiropractor. He comes unglued. Homer in the fifth inning for Milwaukee last night. That tied things at two. Had some trouble with a ball that was hit on a line to center field. That ball had a ton of cut. He missed it. That gave the Cardinals some hope against Devin Williams, but it didn't pay off. Brewers won 3 2. And Weimer said he models his game after Hunter Pence. Well, it's all coming together now, then. Right? We gave Hunter Pence one of the all-time great nicknames, I thought, in Atlanta. We called him the Praying Mantis. Oh, that's great. Looked kind of like a great Yeah, mantis, I can he? see that. One-two pitch. Swing and a miss. Libertor some two-out trouble, but strikes out his third man. Matthew looking sharp. Shut down inning. Cardinals look to add to a one-nothing lead. One of the things, Brad, that makes Corbin burn so tough, you know what's coming, but you still can't hit it. Here's what we mean, our AT&T fiber fast pitch. Yeah, most strikeouts with one pitch. He's fifth, 277 of them with that cutter. A lot of really good pitches on there. That Kevin Gosman split finger, one of the dirtiest pitches in the game, and the most strikeouts with that one. But that's the thing. Even if you know what's coming, good luck squaring it up. Alec Burleson leads off for the Cardinals in the second. 7 8 9. Due against Burns as that's boxed to the plate. One ball, one strike. A lot of tough hitting luck for Burleson of late. He's been barreling stuff, hasn't found any holes yet. Hopefully, tonight's the night for that. On the ground, a second. No hole there. Terang's got it. Peg to first. And there's your first out. Paul DeYoung, your hitter. But first, a quick word from BJC Healthcare. Paul DeYoung, four homers, seven RBIs. First pitch popped up. This one in foul ground Darren Ruff out of the warning track and burns quickly two outs. And Tommy Edmond your hitter what a series he has had. Edmond seven hits against Milwaukee in the first two games he's riding a five game streak as well. A little bit of a milestone for Tommy today too this is 500th big league game that he's appearing in he'd love to add to some of those numbers. have gotten a lot of good work out of the bottom of the order it turns things over to the top and Edmonds had a big hand in that Newt bar as well as that's in for a strike that's when an offense really flows with the DH and look at where the Cardinals rank yeah I mean they, Tommy Edmond is such a versatile player and he's been getting a lot of these at bats out of the nine hole you know he's got gap to gap power sneaky pop with the home runs and gets on base that's down the line nobody's catching that and it's 0 and 2. But again, interesting. We see Tommy, he picks different pitchers 
that profile better from the right side going right on right here against Corbin Burns trying to take away that cutter you would think think that he likes that going away from him as a right handed batter as opposed to boring in on him as a lefty and you mentioned it earlier Chip the numbers against the lefties 148 average 463 OPS against Burns seems like a wise decision here for Tommy missed inside one ball two strikes ten hits for Tommy in this five game hit streak one of them a home run Make this guy work he's had an easy inning so far right back where it came from Edmonds got a six game streak so good production out of the nine spot and Newt Barr will be the batter with two outs. Well that's the exact pitch we were just talking about it was the cutter here from Corbin Burns it is going away from Tommy but he extends the arm reaches out and shoots it right back up the box nearly catching Corbin Burns and get something going. You could tell how hard hit that ball was it knuckled off the bat. Perfectly squared up now Newt. Edmund leads at first and is chased back. See if the Cardinals think about running here with two outs. You've got your leadoff hitter, Newt Barr, in the box. Good lead. Not going. And a sinker low. One ball, no strikes. A one out walk and an infield hit for Arenado His 1000th RBI is the first and only run of this game. Runner goes pitch a strike throw to second not good play by Adonis to keep that from sailing into center and Edmund says not my first rodeo he'll stand at second with two outs. Some said I play those games to his six stolen base of the season. Corbin Burns not the fastest to the plate and a throw that was definitely way too high there by Contreras a base hit gives you a run downstairs two balls and a strike. New bars had a super series. You know he's not afraid to take ball four. He's working the count now. Little roller hit towards second. Tricky hop. But the peg to first will retire Newt Bar and the Cardinals, who lead 1-0 with the 9-1-2 hitters for the Brew Crew coming up. Our third inning tonight is presented by Jimmy Johns. The Cardinals lead 1 0. Nolan Arenado has the game's lone RBI. Matthew Libertor has struck out three. And he is using that fastball with great effect in his first two innings. Yeah, it really is. 33 pitches. 23 of them have been the fastball. He's got nine curveballs to throw one changeup. So the Brewers haven't been flabbergasted yet but so far so good for Matthew who now is part of the Cardinals rotation which will be a six man rotation for the next couple of weeks. Terang drives one toward left shallowly hit that will curl toward Alec and there's your first out one away here in the third inning. The Yachty Tumbler giveaway is back on Friday when the Dodgers are here for game two. 25,000 fans, 16 and up, take home their own stainless steel tumbler featuring Yachtier Molina. That's courtesy of Coca Cola and Quick Trip. Go to cardinals.com slash promotions and get all the details. Miller struck out looking to start the game for Milwaukee. He's reached base safely in 18 straight games. Make it 19. Will the ballpark hold that? It will. It'll bounce off the fence. And Owen Miller with a one out double represents the tying run.
Well, Owen has been hot, as you mentioned. We know the numbers against lefties coming in hitting 387 against him. Tried to sneak the fastball at 95 by him. Your Chevy pitch track, and he was just able to get the hands in and rope a double down the line. His eighth double, and now Libertor with another runner aboard. It was just two for 13 in runners in scoring position in the series. Let's hope that continues. We asked Ali too about Libertor in particular. He had been so dominant in the first month of the Triple A season. How had he done with runners on base? And Ali was impressed with what Matthew had been doing. Yeah, said uh, even recently had gotten to a few jams, worked out of them well. And when you have a breaking ball like that, there's no reason to believe that you can't in a pinch. That ends up being a go-to pitch, but it just still comes back to having confidence in all of your pitches and. No reason to believe he doesn't have that. William Contreras the hitter with one out. Fold in with that one ball two strikes. You see that pitch I mean that starts in the other batter's box as a right handed hitter. I don't know how you can offer it that thing. It's been a good defensive series for William and Wilson Contreras, but offensively, it's been an O Contreras this series for that duo. They're two for 17 combined. How long you've been sitting on that? Little tapper out towards second. Far too long. <laughs> Runner to third. <laughs> and two are out with Adamas coming up. Did it work like you wanted it to? It got the reaction from the truck I totally expected. So yeah. Can't complain about that. Here's a Thomas who struck out his first time up. Was it just a series of groans? Yeah, well, it's par for the course. As we approach 730. And high. One ball, no strikes. Well, first at bat. Matthew Libertor punched out Willie Adamas with his best fastball of the day. He struck him out with 98 away. Ooh. No swing. You see Wilson Contreras back there being very demonstrative, saying, hey, get it in here off the plate. Right now, with Willie Adamas, he's not covering the ball away well, but if you leave a strike in middle in, that's the pitch that he can hammer, but there is room inside off. Behind in the count, flips up a curveball. Now it's two and one for Adamas. Guy's got big time power, but knock on wood, he hasn't shown a lot of that this spring. Adamas at 216 coming into play tonight. Back to the mound and up the middle. Long hop throw and the stretch. Got him! What a play! Nolan Gorman saved a run. Gorgeous play up the middle. Big curveball. Big arm. Early lead for the Cardinals. Presented by our friends at Jimmy John's. Man, talking about preservation. A great play by Nolan Gorman. Saves a run. He made an off balance throw on the third base side of second base and got a fast runner. We all knew that Gorman had a good arm. I didn't know it was that good on the run across his body to make that play. So here in the third, the Cardinals have Goldschmidt, Gorman, and Arenado. Paul's the only man to score so far tonight. And quickly. Oh and two. What's your favorite Jimmy John's? I like the uh, Italian. Can't go wrong. That's hard to beat. Oh two pitch. And a swing and a miss. That cutting away from Goldie. There's out number one. And here is Nolan Gorman. Speaking of Jimmy John's, Jimmy John's quality at bats. Look at the improvements for Nolan Gorman. Well, he is just out there doing his thing. Look, the swing percentage, very, very close. The chase percentage, he ain't chasing a lot, but look at the strikeout percentage in May. Only 12% as opposed to 27% in April. Being more selective and just squaring up baseballs. 
He's really benefited from the banning of the shift, wouldn't you say? Yeah, well, he's smoking the ball through the right side. And you're right, last year you have two guys standing there. So he's got some of that, especially with two strikes. He's taking advantage of that, putting the ball in play and driving it through the right side. And then we know the kind of power he has, but I think that the next level for him is the fact that he's driving the ball the other way also. Two strikes, two outs, doesn't matter to him. Hall of Famer to be or not, doesn't matter to him. Get that sugar and be good to go. Just missed, popped up. Into shallow right, Terrain drifts out. He says, take it, Tyrone Taylor, and he does for out number two. Brian Shapiro, our fine producer, is a big fan of the Jimmy John's roast beef, provolone, and mustard, he said. Nothing else? That's it. Simple man. Yes. <laughs> Nolan Arenado is your hitter. Infield hit for Arenado. Just how he drew up RBI number 1,000 in the big leagues. And that's all we've needed to this point. Nolan now with an eight game hitting streak. That's what's so fun about the Cardinals right now. You've got a bunch of guys riding week long or better hitting streaks. Oh, everybody, I mean, there's like a fight at the bat rack. Everybody wants a piece of it. Bunch of eager beavers. And that's even with a guy as talented as Corbin Burns on the mound, a Cy Young Award winner. And one of the best in the business, but he's down a run in the rubber game of this series. Swing, fly ball down the line, get up ball, that ball near the pole, and just foul. Right at 336. He just missed another home run. Look at this view, Tony Angeles, the cameraman right there, just just foul. Do it again. Do it again. Way to go, Tony. Push it fair next time, will you? Two balls and a strike. Took a shot at left. This one, though, popped up. Park's going to hold this one, and Anderson puts the squeeze on that, and Burns has his first. One, two, three inning. Our duel moves to the fourth. Cardinals have the lead. Cards up one to nothing in St. Louis. A second round pick of the Cards ten years ago. Oscar Mercado's journey took him to Cleveland twice with a brief stint in Philly in between. Mercado called up from Memphis today. He told me I do everything I can to let my athleticism play out on the field. I love this game and I only know one speed. And I hope I can bring that here. Chip, he is thrilled to be with the Cardinals. And it's nice to have him back. 15 stolen bases, 12 doubles with Memphis. As Darren Ruff leads off the Milwaukee fourth. Mercado here because Dylan Carlson's ankle's not getting better. He's on the injured list. A 10 day stint for him. And that's unfortunate because Brad Dillon was playing. His best baseball of the year at the he, time of injury. He was, but there's no reason to go out there compromised. You know, he, he was cleared to hit from the right side. He talked to him yesterday, said things were loosening up a little bit, but why push it right now? You're going to need him in full health. And from a big picture standpoint, you can't keep playing a man short offensively, even with the DH. No, you're right. Yeah, you're right. You need to be able to utilize your bench. We, we talk about matchups all the time late in games. All he needed more to work with, and you give him time to get right. Out of play by Darren Ruff. Cardinals got a first inning run. Matthew Libertor is making that stand up. Ruff, Anderson, and Taylor, the trio for Milwaukee. Driven toward right center. But Nick Barr will track that down. Brewers are hitting the ball seemingly hard, but it's not really jumping yet, which is good to see. There's out number one. Well, that's got to give you confidence, too, if you're liberatory. Yeah, you'd like to be blowing it by everybody and continue to rack up the strikeouts. He's got three of them in this game. 
when you see a night like this where they're hitting the ball and it's not flying, that gives you the confidence. Just go get them. Go at them. Get those quick outs. Anderson walked on a breaking ball his first time up. And the heater misses high. One ball, no strikes. He sprinkled in a few more off-speed pitches this second time through the order. But the fastball has certainly played so far tonight for Matthew. Anderson snapped out of a 17 game homerless spell last night. That's what sunk Jordan Montgomery really disappointing for Jordan Two first pitch homers cost him the game Jordan Montgomery can't catch a break when it comes to the the run support hasn't been there for him I thought he threw the ball well he's giving you a chance he's had two down games this year gave up six against the Cubs gave up seven against the Diamondbacks but he's been the Cardinals most consistent starter unfortunately just couldn't come back and win it it felt like it was going to happen late last night. There's a strike Anderson was a step toward first instead it's a full count. This time Libertor goes with the three one slider at the top of the zone. See what he goes with here three two. And it was a breaking ball that missed badly in the second inning. Now another three two is fastball fouled away. I like that. I'd like to see even more of those mixed in is the fastball down in the zone. If he's able to put the ball at the top of the zone and then down then mix in a couple of different breaking balls. He's going to be tough. Look at the sequence here. A couple of four seam fastballs. He's mixed in a sinker and a slider. Ninety six in on his hands. After working up a lather on a warm night, eighth pitch of the sequence coming up. Tyrone Taylor on deck with one out. That time the breaking ball on time. Look at where that was delivered. And that's punch out number four. Bases empty, two outs. The pitch prior was a 96 mile an hour fastball in that same spot. This time the 78 mile an hour bender takes 18 off and gets the punch out. Taylor 0 for 1 he flied out to Burleson and left and this one headed for left center field long run Newt Bar to the track at the wall he can't get there that ball is gone Tyrone Taylor ambushes and ties the game with a solo home run. Well, Tyrone Taylor was looking first pitch fastball. That's exactly what he got. It's a 95 mile an hour fastball. It looked like it was going to be close. This is how close it was right off the top. They're going to look at this potentially. I don't think this got out of the ballpark. So it doesn't go into the stands. It ricochets back onto the field of play. And this is the intent of replay. It's a boundary call. So the crew chief will take a peek at this. And I think this one's going to come back. And then the umpires will have to place Tyrone Taylor. They always say game of inches. I mean, this thing appears to hit right on the corner. It never goes back and hits the concrete behind. There's a little planter up there on top of the wall. That would be a home run. That right there is absolutely going to be a double. So Mark Wegner is the crew chief. He's in communication with network replay in New York. And whatever the decision is, if it goes the Cardinals way, council might After come out. After the review, the call on the field is overturned. The ball was in play. The runner will be placed at second base. So it's a double, not a home run. Again that was the original intent of replay boundary calls and 
Great challenge because it was a double. Yeah, for sure. Got eyes on that quickly. You only have a certain amount of time to make sure you get that call in, get that challenge in. Let's see if Matthew Libertor on a humid day can leave him there at second with two outs. Caratini singled over short his first time up. So it's a one nothing game. And a strike. Contreras keeps that in front. It's an even count. And Contreras going to be on his toes with Matthew Libertor especially with two strikes if he's going to ask for that breaking ball down in the zone bury it he's going to have to make sure he keeps that thing in front of him swing and a miss turned it loose at 95 love it well, I like that fastball upstairs I'd love to see him bury a breaking ball right off of that one. Get him swing and miss right over the top of it. Caratini's going to take his time out. So a ball and two strikes. Exactly what he tried. He just missed. And two and two. in strike three instead of a homer it's a double and a runner stranded for the Brewers and the Cardinals still lead miss Budweiser bash tomorrow in Budweiser Terrace with Mike Matheny get your theme ticket and get a Mike Matheny bobblehead with your VIP themed ticket you'll get access to an exclusive pregame autograph session tickets available at Cardinals.com slash Bud Bash What's that hullabaloo all about? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what that conversation is. It's continuing with Bruce Dreckman, the home plate umpire, and Victor Caratini as they walk back to the plate. Uh, maybe it was that he didn't give him as many warm-up pitches as he wanted. Took an extra one, throws it down, and now they go at it. Wilson Contreras leads off for the Cardinals. We're told that Burns got six warm up tosses while they waited for Caratini to get his gear back on, then allowed him to throw one more to the regular catcher. And so he's back to work ahead in the count for the Cardinals catcher. Low. Brendan Donovan next Alec Burleson to follow Cardinals get a first inning run Libertores look terrific pitch lined over second there's a leadoff hit Contreras has his second hit of the series so let's move him along shall we in a one run game well this is what you're going to have to do against Corbin Burns you have to be able to take him the other way he throws the cutter this is off the plate away and Contreras hangs with it catches it just off the end of the bat and takes it that way for a single. Donovan might have broken his bat before grounding out in the first inning. So he's up for the second time. Nobody out and takes a strike. Donovan playing first base for the Cardinals tonight. Goldie gets a defensive night off. Oh, nice play at first by Ruff. Brendan Donovan is uh, essentially where's Waldo on a given day. <laughs> I mean, he is all over the diamond, and wherever he is, you know he's going to make a great play. Good idea to get Goldie off his feet, keep his bat in the lineup. No balls and a strike. I must admit, I don't know how you felt about it. I was not a fan initially of the DH coming to the National League. I love the strategy and the like. 
But the ability to do what the Cardinals are doing tonight is one of the best things about having the DH in both leagues. Yeah, you know what? A funny thing sold it for me, Chip. It was Albert Pujols <laughs> is what sold it for me. That was about it. You're not a tough sell then. Ground ball foul. It's one and two. Oh, I, I was with you. Look, traditional National League fan. I liked all of the things that you're talking about, but uh, I'll be totally honest with you. I haven't missed it. I haven't missed that part of it. I do love having the ability to utilize that position for different guys. Seeing the offense at the bottom. We showed you earlier the numbers for the Cardinals there in the nine spot in the order a heck of a lot different than when the pitcher was there over the mound might be trouble near collision ball drop everybody's safe oh that had trouble written all over it once it skipped over the hill Donovan has a hit and the Cardinals are in business with nobody out well Wilson Contreras times this really well he makes it a difficult play on Terang ends up screening him a little bit on this baseball just over Burns does a good job of not going into the tag and Terang who is a sure handed second baseman can't make the transfer here to get the out at first. So Burleson's got to move the runners up after the infield hit shows but butts it past them out Terang another try that's not in time everybody's safe. Back to back infield hits and they're loaded with nobody out just like everyone in the ballpark was expecting the Burley Burleson drops down the drag button ends up getting the knock. Always nice to have this weapon in the toolbox we're talking about it, not enough guys can drop down the bunt. And Terang's got to be saying, can they run something except the option? They're trying to <laughs> run him over at second base. And so a Redbird at every bag. Burns a little frustrated. He's got problems now. Base is loaded. And nobody out. Paul DeYoung, your hitter. But first, a quick word from Rally House. Play ball, St. Louis. Shop the latest in Cardinals style with your favorite brands and throwback designs. Rally House has gear for every fan. Well, let's see what Paul DeYoung does. He popped out his first time up. Got to add on against this guy. Cardinals with six hits have stranded three runners. And outside, ball one. That was the unwritten part of the story last night. St. Louis left 12 men on base. The one for nine with runners in scoring position against a guy like Burns. You're not going to get that many opportunities. You make the right kind of out, you can get a run. Whoa, what a stop. Spiked. Two balls, no strikes. You know how difficult that is to be able to stop that at 96. Oftentimes, with the breaking ball, you're ready to block it. You're not ready to pray, uh, block a 96 mile an hour sinker. He just clean picked it. That saved a run for the moment. Outfield very deep for Paul DeYoung didn't get that there's that cut man that's something it's just late it's just enough to miss a barrel and it's firm it's 96 mile an hour two and two so now this is where the young you're gonna have to shorten up and just figure out somehow some way to make something happen came in with numbers against Burns hit 313 against him in coming into action today at the knees and the young after getting ahead 2 and 0 oh, gets three straight strikes and there's your first out well blew a couple of fastballs by him at the top of the zone this time it's the cutter at the bottom of the zone catches the young looking Cardinal still got the bases loaded one out now and Tommy Edmond, who singled up the middle on a cutter last time, looking to do the same thing here. As we said earlier, the nine spot has been very productive for the Cardinals. It has been tonight. Edmond with a second inning single. Need to make some contact in the air. At the very least, the pitch is a strike. Edmond, eight hits in his last 10 at bats. 
You can see too with that fastball you think all right 97 in how is he not hacking at that. He's looking away. He's looking to hit that cutter the other way. As we said earlier as well this is a huge game in May knowing that the Cardinals and Brewers won't meet again until September. It's the fourth inning of this game. This is a gigantically important inning for the Cardinals offense. No, it really is with the new schedule only 13 head to heads against each divisional opponent. It's a big difference. Breaking ball one and two. Well, attacking Edmund differently this time went with a sinker in. Showed him that big bender there. And now Corbin Burns in the driver's seat. You mentioned it earlier. He's no stranger to strikeouts. This is how he gets out of these jams. He's punched out three tonight. He's got Edmund set up. And the pitch. And he got him to strike out. This is why this man has won a Cy Young Award. There is no situation that scares Corbin Burns, but he's not out of the woods yet. Oh, for all the talk about the cutter, that curveball, that's pretty good as well. Gets Tommy to swing over two of them in a row. Newt Bar 0 for two. Cardinals have done good work with two outs. Need Newt to lift us. Banks is loaded. Generous strike. He doesn't need the help. No, not on that one. Curveball that's off the plate away changes the dynamic potentially of this at bat. Contreras, Donovan, Burleson all aboard with singles in the inning. Back to back strikeouts now as Newt Barr awaits in 0 1. Lifted to the left, it's 0 and 2. And Burns so tough on left hand hitters with that cutter. He's got Newt Bar way behind in the count. Little dribbler in front of the plate. Dribbler in front of the plate. Better. Oh, he's going to be in time. And that will retire the side. Corbin Burns fired up bases loaded nobody out and the Cardinals can't add on National League Championship on Saturday 25,000 fans 21 and up get a beer stein courtesy of Budweiser which highlights the NL championship over the Dodgers tickets and details at Cardinals.com slash promotions. Well if ever the Cardinals needed a shutdown inning Brad I think it's safe to say this fifth inning would be one of them. Yeah you have the bases loaded nobody out. Corbin Burns able to get out of it you see him screaming coming off the mound he's feeling it he's got momentum got to take it right back. We're seeing Matthew Libertor now second time around really leaning on that curveball first time through the order only threw it nine times second time through the order now he's throwing it 17. Little dribbler toward third. That's foul for pitch number 69 in the game for Matthew. He has struck out five men and has scattered three hits. Tyrone Taylor hit a ball off the top of the fence that was ruled a home run, but later correctly changed to a double. Yeah, Corbin Burns got a little momentum going his way. Matthew Libertor trying to break that. Got to be careful here. 0-2. Big swinging Weimer here. You know he's got pop. Strike three. Throws him over the outside corner. Six strikeouts. And a good start to the top of our fifth inning. Show him a couple of the breaking balls away. Start them off with three of them. Then you end up throwing 95 right there on the corner. The good four seamer. It catches Weimer looking. So six strikeouts for Libertor is a career high tying effort. It also happened against Milwaukee last May 28th. 
Bryce Terang, the ninth place hitter, is up. He flat out his first time up. The Cardinals will have their two, three, four hitters do, leading one to nothing. And foul back. Approaching 8 o'clock in St. Louis. Beautiful night. Boy, the weather's been great. Should be awesome all weekend, too. We'll have the Dodgers here for four, and look at that view. From the upper deck and right, the pitch. It's two and two. Not a bad seat in the house. No, there's not at all. And I love that depth, too, on that fastball. 96 right there from Matthew Libertor. Again, showing the ability to go up in the zone with it and then down. That time 97 at the top of the zone. Wonder if he's going to try to bury Terang now with that breaking ball. You've shown him up. I think a breaking ball, even in the strike zone away, gets him. Libertor was consistently in the mid to upper 90s as far as his pitch counts were concerned over his last five starts. So he should have plenty left in the tank here. The pitch didn't chase it. And now Terang a full count. This will be the eighth pitch of the at bat. Owen oh, Miller's had a good series. Here it is. Out of play. I think if he sticks right there, he's going to be just fine. Stick with the fastball, stay away. Preferably, I'd like it down and get a ground ball or get that punch out. But the battle continues. Again, Libertor, a surprise announcement after the game last night that he'd be starting tonight against Milwaukee, a club that's had trouble with left handed pitching. And the Birds will go with a six man rotation. The pitch on the ground. There's that soft contact. And the peg to first in time. And there's out number two. Top of the order for the Brewers. First, a quick word from Great Southern Bank. We've helped many of our neighbors finance their dreams. Let's bring yours to life with affordable options and personalized support at every step. Get started at GreatSouthernBank.com. Miller one for two, a third inning double. He is one of three Brewer hits tonight. Kind of changing the way they're attacking Miller this time. Last time tried to go in on him with the fastball. Couldn't get in there enough, and that's the one that Owen Miller was able to shoot down the line for a double. That one slipped. So a big pitch in our game. A 3-0 count. It made him work in three of his five innings so far tonight. Let's see if Miller has a green light. Oh, we'll never know. Too high. And a four pitch walk. Second pass issued by Libertor. The tying run on. Wilson Contreras ought to know the scouting report on his brother William. He was grounded out twice. Yeah, if you're Matthew right there, he said, you know what, I'm just gonna want to ride with you on this one, whatever you think's best. He's got him twice, got him to ground out full time, grounded out to short, grounded out to second in the third inning. He's got a ton of room on the right side of the Cardinals infield. That one taken high, ball one. Matthew has the slimmest of leads. 
One nothing a first inning Cardinal run. Back to the mound. He'll get out of it. Broke his bat to boot. How about that? Weimer couldn't hang. Terrain grounds out. Miller walks. Contreras taps out. And the Cardinals lead 1 0. Well, partner, after we take two out of three from Milwaukee, we owe the Dodgers some payback. That's our Budweiser What's on Tap for the weekend. Well, the Dodgers bringing in the best record in the National League. Uh, you know, they have been. A very, very complete ball club. But you're right, that did not go the way the Cardinals expected last time out in L.A. A little payback will be a lot of fun here at Bush Stadium. Matthew Libertor a shut down fifth inning. Now Corbin Burns will face the two, three, four hitters for the Redbirds. Paul Goldschmidt will get things started. He's the only man to score tonight. He walked in the first and came home on Arenado's infield hit. Foul back. 0 oh 2. Dodgers got some bad news today. Dustin May left with an elbow injury. Dave Roberts said he's going to the injured list. Yeah, that is uh, tough. Dustin May had, had a very hot start to the season. Pretty much that entire pitching staff has had a hot start to the season. And a breaking ball gets Goldschmidt to swing and miss. Five strikeouts for Burns. Three of the last four outs have come. Via strike three, our T Mobile coverage cam. Cardinals have made a couple of great plays defensively. This one from Gorman. I mean, this was incredible. All of his momentum is going towards third base, and he throws a bullet on a one hop to first. Donovan picks it out, and a huge play there to cut down Willie Adams. Nolan singled his first time up. And you had a great point in between innings earlier tonight. You think about Gorman at second, DeYoung and Arenado, and even Donovan at first. How about the arms on this Cardinal infield? Pretty good, isn't it? I mean, there's not a throw on the diamond that can't be made there in the infield. I think that transition for Gorman from third base to second base has gone quite well. I mean, anybody that's played knows it's a significant difference going to the other side of the infield the way the ball moves the way that your body has to move all of the throws he's done a really nice job turning double plays he got a third baseman or shortstop's arm playing second base that's a big advantage yet yeah, a lot of times you uh, you'll make up for a lot of things because of the strong arm but his strong arm is just a plus I think the footwork has been really good for him he's great around the bag doing everything right over at second Strike three paints the outside corner back to back strikeouts for Burns who's getting stronger two away in the St. Louis fifth Plaza tire service pitch tracks get the call on the cutter it kind of backed up in the middle of the strike zone but it was up gets the punch out looking. Arenado just missed a homer in his sixth game in a row that was back in the third inning It was about a foot foul. That cloud cover providing a little relief on a warm night in St. Louis. See if Arenado can pierce that cloud with a long homer to extend a 1 0 lead. Just a touch low. Well, you knew runs would be tough to come by. Cardinals had one in, two on, one out in the first, got nothing else. Had the bases loaded, nobody out in the fourth and couldn't add on. As this ball is whacked toward right field, Tyrone Taylor measures that up and puts the squeeze on it. Corbin Burns is sent down six straight. Sixth inning rolls around. Redbirds still lead by one. Grateful Dead Night returns to the ballpark on Friday when you buy your special theme ticket. Fans get a short sleeved Grateful Dead. All over print shirt. Come to the ballpark early. A special pregame performance by. Oh, it's Jake's leg, Chip. You got it. Tickets available at cardinals.com slash theme. Theme of this game is the return to the big leagues for Matthew Liberator. 88 pitches head to head with Corbin Burns, and he's matched him pitch for pitch. You got to be incredibly encouraged. With what we've seen to this point from Matthew Libertor pitching effectively with his fastball. We know how good the breaking ball was, but he's putting it where he wants to. 
Gets under that one there. Well, this is exactly what the Cardinals wanted to see from him. You've got action in the bullpen. You've got Adamas way ahead in the count. Be careful with him. He takes strike. Generously called. Thank you. Three balls and a strike. I'd love to see a well located fastball way right here. Get a ground ball. Got the breaking ball call. That was up. Three and two. Surprised by the pitch. Definitely surprised by the call by Bruce Dreckman behind the plate. As Adamas takes his time out, tries to regroup. He was fully in command of this at bat. Matthew Libertor gets right back into it. Long look in and the payoff pitch. Foul. Pitch count piles up a bit for Matthew after Terang forced a 10 pitch sequence. That was in the last inning. Another payoff. into the big crowd in St. Louis tonight. Figure to have big crowds all weekend with the great promo schedule and the Dodgers. Hope you'll join us if you haven't made your plans. You got to love seeing Chip 96 mile an hour on pitch number 98 for Matthew. And that one taken low and it's a leadoff walk. So our BJC healthcare difference maker Matthew Libertor tonight's Cardinal starter. Well Matthew punched out six so far in this ball game and look he did exactly what Ollie Marmol, Dusty Blake the entire staff wanted to do came out here pitched effectively pitched confidently and gets the Cardinals here into the sixth inning. Looks like that's going to be the last pitch that Matthew threw tonight. And he'll get a big pat on the back. He leaves with a one nothing lead and the Cardinals bullpen in play. They got to get 12 outs tonight against Corbin Burns. Brad, we talked about the fastball for Matthew Libertor and that was a big part of his story tonight. The assignment was can he continue to throw hard late into games Well, pitches 95 or more tonight 32 of them last season in seven starts only 60 of those the fastball played we saw his last fastball of the night at 96 miles an hour to Willie Adamas as he talks it over with the veteran Adam Wainwright. Wayno all smiles happy with the performance you know Libby would love to be able to finish that sixth inning but what a performance it was as we take a look at Andre Pallante your Chevy call to the bullpen in for his 13th game of the year. The Brewers are going to pinch hit with Rowdy Telez that doesn't bother the Cardinals when Pallante's right he chews up left handed hitters we'll see how this one turns out. Telez also a double play candidate if Andre can get the ball on the ground Adamas has a good lead at first in a one run game. There's a strike. Palante last night with just 13 pitches in his inning of relief. And has struck out three hitters in his last three and two thirds. Yeah, Palante, three ground balls last night. He is a ground ball machine. And as you mentioned, especially against these left handers, just eats them up. Telez has hit into seven double plays this year. And he's in protect mode now with an 0 2 count. Well, this is how it started for Palante last night. They pinch hit to Les for Brasso, and he ended up striking him out on a curveball. Let's see what he, what he goes with here 0 2. Good try, but overcooked it. It's a ball and two strikes. Both the Cardinals and Brewers have played 10 one run games. Milwaukee's had the best of that. Head to head, they've gone 8 and 2. And the closest to big league games, they're down 1 0 tonight. Ground ball right to short. Step on the bag, throw to first. And that'll take care of Milwaukee's Adamas and Telez. 
Looks like Paul DeYoung on this one was very close to the bag at second. Pretty sure he ended up getting it here, but goes to the base, steps out there with the left foot to get it, just catches it with the side of his foot, and makes the good strong throw over to Donovan at first to complete the double play. Ah, good thing that's a triple E wide shoe. That's right. Knew those flat feet be good for something. So that oh, gets play. Libertor off the hook. Five shutout innings. And now Brian Anderson hits with the bases empty. He has walked and struck out. Driven down the line near the pole, but curling foul. Strike one for Anderson. I love seeing those two talk it over again. Wainwright. I mean, a wealth of knowledge right there. Matthew Libertor, if I'm him, I'm going to be in Wayno's pocket pretty much all the time, picking up everything that I possibly can. That shot made me hungry. I get the burger phone. Don't know who's going to be calling the home run next inning, but I like seeing that thing out. A ball one strike for Anderson. Base is empty. I know swing but that shot does speak volumes as to the value of Adam Wainwright heck any veteran you know what Adam Wainwright's trying to do he's trying to get to 200 big league wins Libertor in the infancy stages of what we all hope will be a long 20 year career too well and if you can learn something from Adam and learn a lot maybe it expedites some of the learning curve right something that you can pick up from him and implement early before you have to go through a different struggle out on the mound and learn that lesson for yourself that's where having great veteran teammates and Adam Wainwright is the best I mean, he's there to help every single one of his guys whether you're you know going out there and asking him questions or he'll come to you with things that he sees what a valuable piece Anderson now a full count. The payoff from Palante is fouled away. Anderson with a long at bat, 11th pitch of the inning for Palante, and he pulls that. And the Brewers still have life, second walk of the inning. Anderson walks for the second time and here's Tyrone Taylor who was hurt by Mother Nature thankfully. Well this one right here a game of inches just barely barely doesn't get out of the yard Statcast 3D powered by Google Cloud. Maybe the wind had a little something to do with this thing keeps it in the yard and Matthew Libertor made sure he stayed there on second base. Alante flips up a breaking ball not a bad idea for Taylor who's got one of the three Brewers hits tonight. Andre way ahead now it's 0 and 2. I think you're going to see a lot of this these two together rightfully so Anderson leads at first the 0 2 he's in the dirt snap throw back to first you'd be foolish not to take advantage of that kind of professional wisdom if you're Libertor or any other pitcher well, it's something that Adam Wainwright has talked about early in his Braves career. He had the opportunity with Greg Maddox, and Greg would tell him, hey, I'll be in the weight room at 6 a.m. if you want to talk. And Wayno didn't get there as a young man in spring training. And like one regret that he has of not spending as much time with Greg Maddox as he possibly can. Now, I'm sure he's made up for that over the years. And you know that he is a guy he will listen as well and wants to take in all of the knowledge. But he wants to be there for his young teammates. His older teammates wants to be there for everybody. No more drama, Mr. Palante, shall we? Two balls, two strikes.
Caratini would be next. He's got a hard hit single tonight. We'd rather face him in the seventh. Cardinals pretty much straight away in the outfield. They play Taylor to pull with Nolan Gorman. Runner will lead. There he goes, and the pitch is lying towards center. It's down for a base hit. And Milwaukee's got him first and third with two outs. So let's see how Caratini will hit. He switch hits. He's approaching the left side of the batter's box. A Dusty Blake on his way out to talk this one over with Andre Pallante. Cardinals still have action in their bullpen. Drew Verhagen is up. And while the Cardinals talk it over in a 1 0 game, we step aside for a quick word from Jack in the Box. My ribeye steakhouse burgers are made with 100% ribeye beef. Think of them as the CEO of burgers. Well, as we told you, Palante is excellent against lefties as Drew Verhagen continues to warm up. Caratini is choosing to hit left handed here. Let's see how it plays out. First and third in a one nothing game. Strike at the knees. A little something extra there with Andre Pallante. 98 down at the bottom of the zone. Caratini is a left hand hitter batting 324. As a righty he came in hitting 100. No balls and a strike. Arenado backs up at third base now the pitch at the knees perfectly placed do that again it's 0 and 2. Yeah I'm with you I, I think I stick with this heater the plaza tire service pitch track tracking right there on the corner at 96 tie him up inside. Libertor's fate rests in the hands of Palante here the 0 2 is on the way. Got him swing and a miss. The Brewers strand two more in the sixth. Libertor in the lead, one nothing in St. Louis. Right, we mentioned how good the Cardinals bullpen has been of late. How about Mr. Palante? It's double play and a strikeout to preserve a one nothing lead. Yeah he got it done punched out Caratini with a 97 mile an hour fastball. I love the fact that they stayed with the heater. It was three fastballs in a row didn't mess around with the breaking ball. They took advantage of that inner half of the plate against him. Now it's time to get back to work against Burns. Well. Oh, Wainwright has made the call. Okay, so this is a burger phone. These guys are calling homers left and right, and in honor of Big Mac Land, they picked up a burger phone, which has got to be difficult to get. When the phone is open, that means somebody dialed it up and called a homer, and it sits in front of whoever called said homer. So look, Wayno's on the call here. I think it's because Adam is the only guy old enough to remember using a flip phone. Yeah, that might have a cord attached to it. <laughs> which kids, kids, that was a thing. You actually had to stand in a room. Uh-huh. Two balls and a strike. A little chopper foul. Do you imagine putting a rotary dial phone in a room with <laughs> 15 year old kids and say call home? Have you ever watched some videos of kids trying to do the rotary phone? It's the funniest thing in the world. No shot. No, they have no idea what it is. Let's see what's ailing Caratini here. Big swing. Caught him on the wrist, looked like right there with the end of the bat. Verhagen has taken a seat for the Cardinals. Giovanni Gallegos is starting to play catch now. The 8 9 1 hitters are due for the Brewers. 
2 2 count for Wilson Contreras. And a swing and a miss. This guy is unrelenting. Burns with seven strikeouts. And after that bases loaded scenario, he got fired up and he is backing it up here in game three. Don't miss your chance to get discounted Cardinals tickets. Get eight or more gallons of gas at a participating station using Phillips 66's Fuel Forward app, and you'll get two for one Cardinals tickets. For more information, go to cardinals.com slash Phillips 66. For obvious reasons, we hope Milwaukee falls out of the Central Division race. But it'll be very interesting to see if they choose to move this guy and what the market for him is going to be. I would say the market will be wide for a guy like Corbin Burns. The asking price incredibly high, but I would think for him worth it. A great counsel. I don't think that he'd be in favor nope. of getting rid of the guy, especially look, they, they got Woodruff. He's on the shelf currently. Wade Miley had to leave the ball game yesterday with a left lat strain. I mean, they're they're in a little bit of a hole here when it comes to their starting pitching, but a valuable commodity. It looks still a first place ball club. Uh, ball club. Chance for the Cardinals to get a game back in the division if they can hold on to and add to this one nothing lead. Milwaukee at 24 and 18. The Pirates two games back. Cubs five out with the Reds. And the Cardinals 17 and 26. Reds got some bad news today. More on that after the 2 2 pitch, which is in the dirt. I did not see Nick Lodolo pitch for Cincinnati. You did, but he's out. He's got a stress reaction in his tibia. He's going to miss several weeks. Yeah, that is disappointing. Nick Lodolo is an electric young pitcher and, I mean, arguably one of the better arms out there. They've been so high on that young man, so disappointing. Right back where it came from, and Donovan down to two strikes. Hits one off the end of the bat, and he's two for three. So there's a rally with one out. Alec Burleson with his second bunt single. Last time up is your next batter. If you're going to get Corbin Burns with two strikes, you're going to have to hit tough pitches, and that's exactly what he does here. That changeup there just tailing away. Breaks his bat in the process, but ends up serving in the center. On the ground toward first step on the bag and that's all Milwaukee's going to get Donovan moves up Burleson out at first on the first pitch and Paul DeYoung is coming up Young struck out looking that was the first of three straight outs after the Cardinals loaded the bases back in the fourth inning but all's forgiven with a base hit here. They give him a ton of room on the right side. Try to hit it that way and sprays it back toward us. Strike one. Well, first inning, fourth inning, labored a little bit. Other than that, been pretty easy work here for Burns. All it takes is one. Saw Burns last time up with Paul DeYoung really attack him with the heater. This time starting with the fastball, went breaking ball. Still thinking that you look away, look to drive it that way, hit a cutter. Fly ball center, Weimer going back, still going, track, wall, she is gone! Forgiven, it's three to nothing. Not sure who had this call on the burger phone chip, but it's a good call here with Paul DeYoung. Talked about jumping on the cutter. That's exactly what he did. He got the cutter from Burns. It was down. He went down and got it and hit a rocket into center field. So the Cardinals extend the lead. Ground ball toward third foul. Old saying, you used to dial nine for long distance. 
That was the number punched into the burger phone here for the Cardinals in the sixth. Jim, that's a reference lost on most viewers, but you are right. No, really. I, it was nine. <laughs> that cost extra money back in the day. No, yeah. thank you. Not yes, happening. It did. Had to use a calling card. Kid looked that up, too. That was a thing. <laughs> Uh, there's the ball low, one ball, one strike. Paul DeYoung's renaissance at the plate continues when the Cardinals needed it most. His fifth home run, nine RBIs, and it was a blast to the Berman Center. Broken bat out to second. Terang's got that, and the throw to first will take care of Tommy Evan. The Cardinals with two outs and on. Man, oh man, was this a big blow? Burns knew it. Weimer as far as he can go. A two run homer sends us to the seventh. The Cardinals lead game three. Ryan Helsley, four outs, three outs to get to preserve a 3 0 Cardinals lead. Budweiser play of the game as we head to the ninth inning, and it came with the Cardinals shortstop at the dish. That only makes sense. Paul DeYoung is the guy, got a cutter down, two run shot to center field. Cardinals get it done with two outs. That's where this game stands right now 3 0. That swing of the bat made it. So Ryan Helsley will try to attempt a four out save. Michael King of the Yankees has three of those. That leads everybody in Major League Baseball. And this is Ryan's seventh appearance of more than one inning, assuming he gets three outs in the ninth. Libertor went five plus, three hits, no runs, struck out six in his season debut. Palante, a scoreless inning. Gallegos, an inning in two thirds, and now Helsley will try to wrap it up as he's ahead of Jesse Winker. Well, Jesse Winker does have a little history. Three for four with a double against Helsley. Ooh, that was close. Man, a pitch that's been a strike all night long off the plate away. Doesn't get it there at 102. Throw it there again. Instead, it's low, full count. Rick Doherty, our stat man upstairs. What would you say Rick did tonight? How would you evaluate his performance? Look, I, I thought uh, Rick, first of all, always puts it all out on the field every single night. Gave us stats that just help enhance the broadcast that we just pawned off as our own. I mean, everything was aces from Rick tonight. So straight A for Rick tonight. The pitch is pop foul and out of play. He didn't ask Rick what his favorite Jimmy John sandwich is either. Maybe we can ask that tomorrow as that man is hoping to earn his first win tonight of the season. Yeah well this is uh, Matthew Libertor earned the opportunity to get back up here to the big leagues and took advantage of it tonight in this ball game. That's outside a leadoff walk. And that's what Ali said before the game. Perfect world. Libertor comes in, pitches great, does it again six days later, and makes the Cardinals ponder some difficult decisions. For sure. Like, you have a few decisions. Do you want to keep going with a six man rotation? Who does he beat out in this rotation? Like, if he keeps throwing the ball well, that is a, a welcomed problem. And the Cardinals plan to stick with this six man grouping until the end of the month a scheduling quirk Cardinals have a day off on Wednesday May 31st and. Then Thursday June 1st before going to Pittsburgh that never happens. And I'm guessing that has to do with the the London trip for the Cardinals which comes up at the end of next month. But two days off back to back midweek. Is indeed something strange. Yeah, I get it'll be welcomed at the time after the long slate of games beforehand. So the six man rotation, it, it really did hinge on the way that Libertor threw the ball today. If things did not go well, I think that they would have adjusted their course. That's lifted foul by Terang. 
the count to him. One ball, two strikes. This is a very important hitter in the game. You don't want to bring the potential tying run to the plate. Did he go? Nope. It's two and two. Big pitch. Lifted toward left. Mercado on the run near the netting and won't have a play. Tell you what, one thing that's impressive about this guy is he's tough to beat with any pitch. He'll just fight it off, foul it away, flip the bat, and try to force a mistake. Yeah, super annoying. <laughs> the, way, the way that he goes about it. No, we saw Terang uh, yesterday in the ball game. His first three-hit game, and none of it was hit hard, but he just fights things off. On the ground toward third, the Cardinals get one, and Terang is at first after Winker is forced. Smart play there. Don't try to force the issue. Get the first out and give Helsley another crack. And here's Miller. Got to figure out how to get this guy out. He's reached base now in 19 straight games. He's got two more hits in this one. 23 hits in that 19 game stretch. Make it another. A three hit night, and now you've got trouble. Well, when you're facing Ryan Helsley, you better be ready for the fastball. That's exactly what Miller was. It was 99 right down the middle. Ground ball base hit. Contreras is 0 for his last 10 with runners in scoring position. He hits with two on, one out. And he is 0 for 4 in tonight's game. Well, he's been a ground ball machine too. Ryan Helsley, not necessarily a ground ball pitcher. He throws something down in the zone. It's going to be tough for Contreras to elevate it. That's six double plays Contreras has hit into with all those ground balls that he's been serving up. One ball, one strike. Brewers are two for 19 in this series with runners in scoring position. They've left. 10 on base. They've got two more out there in the ninth in a three run game. And a strike. One ball, two strikes. Strike three. Pull the string on it. That's a lot to cover, isn't it? Well, two pitches ago, got away with the backup slider. This one, the perfect slider at 89 miles an hour. It's right there on the corner to get the punch out. And now the Cardinals are one out away from their third straight series win. Two out of three against the Cubs swept the Red Sox and now on the cusp of taking two out of three from Milwaukee that evening the season series head to head with the Brewers. A little pop towards short and that's going to do it. Cardinals win the series. They shut out Milwaukee and pick up another game in the Central Division race. The Cardinals knew they had a tough task going up against Corbin Burns, but Matthew Liberatore gets the victory. He matched him pitch for pitch. Paul DeYoung with a big swing of the bat to make it 3-0, and the Cardinals' bullpen made it stand up. What a series it was for the Redbirds. They shut out Milwaukee and won't see him again until September 18th. When the Brewers come to Bush for a four game series and you know those games will be even bigger.
Libertor and the Cardinals shut them out. 3 nothing. your final. It'll be a happy Cardinals postgame show, and that's coming up next.